Self-defense in Indiana. Self-defense is one of the recognized defenses in the state of Indiana through criminal charge. Basically, the defense is, yeah, I did the crime, but there's a reason for it. It's a justification. And self-defense is extremely powerful. And that's just not just something we're talking about as two lawyers talking to the audience. This law firm has successfully defended three cases this year alone at jury trial alleging self-defense. That's huge. So Matt, give us a little breakdown about self-defense. So in Indiana, they take self-defense very seriously. However, there are three main components that you must meet before you can make a self-defense argument. First, you need to be in a place you're actually allowed to be at. Second, you have to not be doing something illegal. You can't be the aggressor. It has to come to you first. And then third, you have to be in the fear of death, serious bodily injury, or the imminent use of force against you. In other words, if I get this close to you, you have all the right to hit me in the face. I don't have to hit you first. Now, if I'm standing over here and we're having a casual conversation, you can't just come tackle me like you're some outside linebacker playing in the NFL. It doesn't work that way. But most importantly, Indiana, they actually have statute that says, no person in this state shall be put in fear of legal jeopardy for defending themselves, somebody else, or their own property. So, that's huge. You know, you don't have to wait until you're hit first to actually defend yourself. So if Matt is very mad at me, we're screaming at each other, and he takes a step towards me, that's reasonable that I feel like he is gonna use force against me. And I'm allowed to hit him to try to prevent him from using force against me. You do not have to wait to get attacked first. So those are the three requirements that a person must prove to use self-defense, but then self-defense even goes one step greater than that. The person has to reasonably believe that self-defense was necessary and the way they defended themselves must be objectively reasonable. So basically, the situation as in the person who used self-defense in their shoes wasn't reasonable. Well, if we're both fighting, you take a step towards me, it's reasonable that I felt intimidated, I'm gonna hit you back or hit you first. Now, the response has to also be objectively reasonable. What that means, very, very simple. If Matt takes a step towards me, I take a step towards Matt, and I pull out a gun and I shoot him, that's not reasonable because I essentially overreacted. And this is something that happens all the time. You will see case law after case law where somebody breaks into someone's home and the person shoots them. It is 100% allowed to use a bullet to defend your home. Now what the problem is, these homeowners will unload round after round after round and it's so over the top, the self-defense goes away because their response was not objectively reasonable. That's something we see a lot. So. You have to believe the force is necessary and the way you respond must be reasonable. So Matt, we talked a lot about, you know, against other people, but what happens when you're trying to defend property? Well, you're 100% allowed, and we kind of touched on this a little bit, you are allowed to defend your property, but again, it has to be reasonable. Can you booby trap your house in case an intruder comes in while you're sleeping? No, you cannot do that. If somebody comes and steals your potted plant from the front, can you shoot them? No, you can't do that. It has to be reasonable reaction to that. So if you if you throw one shot into them, if they break into your house, that's fine. If it doesn't kill them, it doesn't give you the right to then continue until they die. It doesn't work that way. You have to make sure that anything you do is reasonable in the situation. No booby traps, don't go shooting people multiple times, and don't go shooting people for crazy reasons like a stolen potted plant. Self-defense is incredibly fact-specific, and there's no real easy way to say, hey, you definitely are gonna have a successful self-defense claim, or you will not have a successful self-defense claim. But one of the consistent ways we see police officers and prosecutors try to eliminate a self-defense claim is to get a person to make statements. And so basically try to catch them in little trip-ups. Hey, what'd you have breakfast yesterday morning before you hit that person? Oh, I had eggs. Oh, here's a picture of you having cereal. You lied to me, so you're lying about other things. That seems over the top. Those are things that we actually see as attorneys, and you will see detectives trying to use as evidence that someone's a liar. The most important thing, if you think you have a self-defense claim, do your absolute best not to give a statement to law enforcement until you have talked to a seasoned defense attorney who knows what they're doing. And the best way to do that is to always plead the fifth. If you have any questions about self-defense, give us a call, 317-632-3642.